Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Bid Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode, liked, commented, shared, did the social media stuff, and you know, very much appreciated. Um, certainly, it seems like there's a lot of love out there for for the Ben Nevis Distillery, but uh, and you. By and large people, everybody has seemed to agree with me that they're not the most organised of distilleries and uh, um, <laughs> it just, you can't get it for love nor money anywhere, you know, so it's all a bit, um, all a bit strange and uh, um, you would have thought that the Japanese seem to pride themselves on being, you know, organised and completely sorted and uh, um, in, in this instance uh, that seems to be very far from, from, from the, the truth. Um, and uh, but anyway, that's that was last week's episode of the show. Uh, let's talk uh, Canadian whiskey again. Now um, you probably noticed that I seem to do quite a few episodes of the show featuring Canadian whiskey somehow or other, and that is because my good friends at uh, Two Brewers in in the Yukon kindly send me samples of their new releases and. Um, considering that they're taking the time and effort and expense to sort of send samples, you know, halfway around the world, it would just be rude not to actually review them. And um, as you know, sometimes I have to be a bit, you know, shoehorn them into sort of other tastings. But obviously this week, um, a completely um, Canadian episode of the show, which uh, and why not? Canada seems to be so overlooked. Um, as far as a whiskey producing country is uh, is concerned and, and that's mainly because it just doesn't get over the hair. I mean that's the biggest issue I have with uh, with uh, two brewers is that you can't buy it over here it's just a real crying shame because their, their, their whiskey as you well know I'm a huge fan of um, <coughs> and uh, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, they're obviously not a huge distillery. They're going to obviously sell all of their um, production in Canada, North America. Um, and I guess there's no real sort of need or desire to sort of um, export to, to, to the UK, which, like I said, is a, a real shame because then all you're left with is, well, what are we left with? Canadian Club and a few other bits and pieces. You know, it's not really kind of... Um, not exactly particularly exciting, I mean, uh, but anyway, um, that's all by the by, like I said. Uh, so, I've got uh, three distilleries, well, two distilleries and, and, a, and a brand. Um, uh, so basically, um, a big thank you to my good friend Shane for the samples from uh, um, Glenora. Uh, now, I think I have featured Glenora in, in the past, so I'm not going to sort of like uh, um, talk too much about them, uh, apart from interesting all from all over uh, Canada so you know Glen, um, Glen Scotia <laughs> Nova Scotia um, in the in the east and then we've got Yukon in the sort of like in the, in the northwest and uh, um, and then we've got uh, Wizards or JP Wizards which um, these two samples were from um, 2014 when I tasted them for the for the whiskey magazine and uh, Interestingly, um, Wizards appears to be uh, Canada's oldest uh, pro continuously produced Canadian whiskey. Um, the, the the brand itself was founded by I think John Paul Wizard, I think, uh, in 1857, and um, although no longer produced by um, that family, it is now that or the brand is now currently owned by Hiram Walker and is produced for them um, by Corby Distillers. Now, originally was distilled at um, the uh, the Corby Distillery in Corbyville by Corby Distillers, lots of Corby, um, until the 1980s when production apparently shifted to uh, the Hiram Walker, uh, Walkerville Distillery. They like to use their sort of, you know, fairly straightforward names, don't they, in Canada? Yeah, no, no, no sort of mucking about it. Walkerville, you know, anyway. Um, so one, having never tasted sort of, you know, whizzes from sort of, you know, the 80s, one imagines that moving distilleries has probably changed the character of the, uh, of the spirit, but obviously uh, we just have to work with what we've got. And it sounds like, uh, like a, like a lot of the bourbon distillers that have several brands that they produce at the same distillery, there, there seems to be um, 
whether there's a, a, a different mash bill used to sort of something like Canadian Club, I don't honestly know. I imagine probably not, but I know the production is different to that in that um, I think Canadian Club is, uh, um, is, is basically sort of blended and then uh, casked, uh, whereas I think Wizards is the other way around, where it's basically the spirit is, is put into cask, uh, use a lot of different char, uh, in, uh, in in this particular brand and it's all blended together so um, interesting and again sort of you know it's uh, uh, fairly well obviously we have the, have the rye and uh, um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here aren't I really so anyway look like I said not going to sort of you know uh, waffle too much about the distilleries but we'll uh, we'll just just move on to sort of looking at the at the lineup <laughs> So we're going to kick off with uh, the Cape Breton Silver, so produced at, uh, at Glenora, technically labelled as a vodka, but for all intents and purposes, it's new make, um, new make uh, Glenora. Uh, it's bottled at 45%, now I don't know whether it's filtered, um, it's possible, I mean, uh, it, uh, it's obviously not bottled out, it's, uh, as it comes off the still because it's bottled at 45%, but it's basically the closest we're going to get to um, the, 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 you know, the character of Glenora's uh, malt spirit. Um, second bottling we'll be looking at, again, thanks to my good friend Shane, this is the Glen Breton Rare 10-year-old. This is bottled at uh, 43%, so I think that should be quite uh, quite a nice start. Then we're going to move on to the two JP Wizards. The first one we're going to be looking at is the is just a no age statement rye bottle at forty percent. Don't believe that this is still in production because having a look at the the uh, the website, it seems to ju they seem to just be focusing now on uh, age statement bottlings, and I think. From memory, there was a 12, 15, and 18, and a 21, and no mention of this no age statement uh, rise. So, one assumes, um, yeah, blending of various ages, probably relatively young. Don't know, but we'll obviously figure that one out when we get there. Second bottling uh, is uh, something a little bit, uh, a little bit interesting. This is called the, uh, the the Red Letter, and this is the 2013 release, bottled at 50, uh, 45 percent. Uh, apparently, Red Letter was introduced by um, Dr. Don Livermore, and uh, uh, it, it was uh, first released in 2007 as a, a homage to. Um, the 150th anniversary of John Phillips uh, Wizards Distillery in um, Prescott, Ontario, and it's been released a couple of times since uh, 2013, which I've got here. I think it was released again in 2015. Now, um, I've got a note that I was told at the time that uh, this only contained 10% rye. Now, uh, from what I can establish, uh, Corbyville. Um, Corbyville, Corby Distillers uh, at, uh, for the Wizards produce um, spirit from corn, rye, uh, malted rye and malted barley. So um, if this has only got 10% um, rye, then obviously the, the, the rest has got to be made up of malted barley and, um, and corn. So, but, you know, we'll see. Um, uh, on, on, like I said, couldn't find out a huge amount about the mash bill for this particular bottling. Uh, I imagine Eric will probably know. I mean, Eric is obviously the, uh, the fountain of all knowledge when it comes to ca Canadian whiskey. So uh, no doubt there'll be uh, there'll be a, a long piece underneath the video about uh, about it. I imagine. So um, yeah, let me know. Um, and then we're going to move on to the two new releases from uh, the uh, two brewers. The uh, to Brewers uh, Yukon Single Malt Whiskey. God, I'm getting tongue around that. So we've got uh, the first. The first one is uh, release number twenty. I'm doing these back to front for obvious reasons because twenty is in their innovative range, and it's uh, it's bottled at forty three percent, and the spirit has been finished in um, ex maple syrup barrels. Unusual. Now, when I got the sample, um, I normally get a sort of spec sheet and what have you but I've got absolutely nothing I remember tasting it and 
well, anyway, we'll, um, so I hadn't got a clue what was innovative about it. Um, and uh, then we're going to finish off with uh, release number 19, again at 43%, and this is another batch of their peated malts. So, so there, there, there we go. That's uh, that's this week's lineup. So let's uh, let's kick off with a bit of uh, a bit of vodka then. So uh, Cape Breton Silver bottle of forty three percent. Like I said, effectively uh, Glenora new make. Let's see what the nose gives us. Quite soft, uh, cereally, barley, lot of sweet malt. Um, it's a slight, almost kind of juniper herbal note. Um, it's got some some good depth to it. It's got a light oiliness. As a uh, you know a um, semblance, which is probably the wrong word, but there's a, a sort of uh, estery kind of um, fruity undertone. Um, shall we say to to this new make? Um, but the sort of like I said, the main emphasis seems to be on the malt and the barley, and it's got a lovely sweetness to it, delicious sweetness, and um, hmm, that's that rather rather appealing. It has to be said. Let's uh, see what the palate's like. Again, soft, cereally, slightly creamy, plenty of barley, bit short, um, just a faint off the still note in the background. And again, it kind of, it feels like it's been filtered because, you know, I would expect a little bit more if this is just purely sort of double distilled um, malt. I would expect a little bit more oiliness. I'd expect a little bit more of that off the still note. So I'm guessing it's probably been filtered. There's a... A little bit of a citric sharpness right on the finish and an and almost kind of feeling of spice and not an actual taste of spice because obviously the spice character is going to come from, from the wood but it's got a just a sort of note, a kind of a, a feeling of, of tingling and a, and a sort of spice note. Um, so, so yeah, pretty, pretty good, it has to be said. Um, Obviously, the, the the new make spirit is 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 very very impressive, um, and um, yeah, let's uh, move on to the malt. Right. Okay. So this is the uh, the rare ten year old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? I wouldn't say it's a little raw. It's got that kind of. Um, Sweet toshiny rose petal, um, strawberry mousse, barley. It comes across like Ogentoshin, like a triple distilled um, or highly rectified spirit. Um, as, as, again, there is some fruit there and it is on the slight tropical side. Um, there's a bit of, bit of apricot, green banana. Touch of citrus, underripe pineapple, possibly. It's got a lot of underripe fruit kind of character. Um, some barley notes, obviously, and um, yeah. I mean, again, it's it's a, it's a pleasantly balanced nose. I mean, you know, you've obviously got to like that strawberry moussey kind of Ockentoshiny kind of character to enjoy this. Um, and it's, but it's not overly confected. There's certainly, I think it's quite quite well balanced. There's certainly other um, aromas and uh, characteristics to kind of offset that um, that Ockentoshiny like note. But sort of pass on. First impressions, it's a little underpowered at 43%. Realistically, I would have liked to have seen this at 46 or possibly even above. It 
it meanders, it's gentle. Um, there's less of that rose petally kind of strawberry mousse character. It kind of comes through more on the finish. It's it's got it kind of opens up more with the sort of like the underripe pineapple, the apricot, the barley, the malt. Um, there's a little spiciness on the middle. The the intensity picks up a bit, but uh, again, I think it's kind of suffering from a lack of alcohol. Really, um, if that had been bottled at forty six percent, it would have kind of brought up the spice. The, the, the spices and I'm obviously guessing at 43% this has been filtered um, and it, it, although it's it's pleasant it's 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 nice oh I don't like using the word nice it's it's uh, nice is such a horrible word isn't it? it it's pleasant but I fear I feel that more could be done with this this spirit um, and you know I've tasted other bottlings uh, of Glenora and I know how damn good it can be and this is a, technically their flagship bottling I suppose and it to me it's just lacking a little bit of intensity pleasant but just lacking that intensity right okay so let's move on to the first of the two JP Wizard bottlings this is the uh, no age statement rye bottle of 40% let's see what those give us Now that's a nice nose, uh, even at 40%, 40 um, it's got that, it's got that sort of high toned, um, column still like um, spiciness, uh, dried fruit, roasted coffee granules, a touch of toffee, it's a, there's a, an edgy spiritiness to it, um, but that's not sort of, you know, uh, too, um, intrusive um, there's some lovely charred oak and smokiness kind of coming through um, it's certainly got a very oily um, column still dried fruit character um, with a little bit of spice and but more of the sort of you know slightly raw botanical sort of spirit character so again it would kind of say to me that this is predominantly young rye spirit um, but there's certainly no off notes there's no faintiness there's no you know off the still notes it, it's it is yeah it's quite classy i think so um let's uh let's see what the, the bat's like pleasant spicy bite on the finish um, again it's not hugely complex it's pleasant it's got that sort of slightly rummy oily dried fruit character um, some dried apricot a little bit of dried banana a little bit of spice like I said coming through on, on, the, on the, the middle and the finish it's not got a huge amount of complexity I can't imagine that this bottling sold for a huge amount of money it's 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 classy, it's pleasant, it's, it just says, you know, column still distilled Canadian whiskey to me, and, you know, it's just it's just pleasant, it's a sipping whiskey, it's a sort of, you know, unpretentious um, quaffer, should we say, so, yeah. Right, okay, so let's move on to the red letter, let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Ah, no, that's a bit more like it. That's got some intensity to it, you know, 45%. This is, this is right. Um, it's oily, it's woody. Again, it's got that sort of slight herbal, um, rye-like character. Um, there's some big, chunky oak sat there in the background. Um, a little bit of charred oak, a touch of perfume. A little bit of smoke as well, more intensity from the dried fruits, and um, it certainly feels like there's a little bit more age going on here. Um, and obviously, um, touch of sort of, and again, it's like woodiness, a touch of sandalwood. Um, so this is if this is sort of paying homage to 
the style of Wizards as it was originally. Um, this is pretty damn good, it has to be said. And um, and if there is only 10% rye here, hmm, um, it's it, again, it comes across more column steel. I don't know whether this is produced on a column still, but certainly from the nose it would seem to indicate that. Um, and yeah, the spices are quite subtle, um, and maybe there's a, maybe the fatness of, of it, the oiliness is coming from the corn, possibly. Um, but either way, I mean, that's, that's a superb nose, absolutely superb. Let's see what the power's like. Mm. Again, lovely vibrancy on the palate. Again, comes across like a like a column still distilled grain whiskey with that slightly rummy fruit coming through on on the finish. Again, a touch of spice, um, which if it is only ten percent rice, certainly sort of I think punching above its weight. Um, touch of coffee. Um, again, the oak is quite chunky. Um, but it has a, a, the, the alcohol and the citric notes kind of really balance it up quite nicely. The oak never really becomes too intrusive. It's all sitting nicely in the background. Yes, it's kind of quite chunky and, and vanilla. Um, and there's a touch of sort of a charred oak as well. It It's a pretty damn good blend as far as I can see. I mean, obviously, Dr. Um, Dr. Johnson. No, nope, not Dr. Johnson. Um, uh, Dr. Livermore uh, obviously knows exactly what he's doing. Well, he should do anyway. He's been doing it for long enough. Um, yeah, that that is that's a bloody good whiskey. That's all I can say. That is really good. Right, okay, so finally, uh, moving on to the two, um, two uh, the first of the two from the two brewers. God damn me! Um, so this is uh, this is no, release number twenty uh, innovative, uh, finished in mobile silver casks. Mmm. Um. Yeah. Um. Right. Okay. So it's quite hoppy. It's quite malty. It's quite barley. It's it's confected. Um overly confected there's a, there's white fruit there's when I first tasted this without knowing I thought this was possibly distilled from a beer mash it has a beery kind of character there's almost a stoutiness uh, to it um, there's a obvious obvious sweetness as well um, I mean I'm, I'm not the world's biggest fan of maple syrup so it, I, I, I guess if you know maple syrup you'd have gone oh maple syrup uh, but to me I was kind of groping around in the dark shall we say um, and it is quite sweet and it's it's I, I, I really although I love um, you know two brewers uh, malt um, or spirit I, I love what they're doing this really is just not my cup of tea um, it's almost almost verging on a liqueur um, it really is pretty sweet and it's not sickly I mean it's balanced I will give it that you know um, but you know I'm not loving it as they say let's just see what the power's like That's a bit of a cloying, sweet finish. I can see the maple syrup. I can see the sort of syrupy, sweet, confected character. It, but to me, it's got a kind of cherry note. And I, I mean, when I tasted this, I was thinking... I, the trouble is, of course, when you taste something blind, you kind of almost, to a certain extent, you're looking for something to latch onto to kind of give you an indication of what the hell it is you're actually tasting. And, and sometimes that kind of latching onto a specific 
flavour or, or aroma kind of sends you off down a you know the wrong path and and I became fixated on this kind of cherry note and I was convinced it was you know um, made from a, 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 a beer mash I, you know I, I thought it was distilled from a beer uh, and finished in ex, uh, cherry liqueur casks I mean you know can you get more random than that you know but even so you know maple syrup now you know I'm I'm sure there's loads of you out there that are gonna love this stuff you know it's it's kind of but to me it's just sweet it's overly syrupy it's confected I'm really not getting a huge amount of spirit character it the nose is just about balanced the palate is just sweet you know and it's just like no this is not for me and um, just being honest <laughs> Okay, time to cleanse the palate with a bit of peat then. So this is uh, release number 19, uh, again bottled at 43%. Let's see what the nose gives us. Ah, ah, now this is more like it. This is this is proper whiskey, you know. This is um, lightly estery, fruity, touch of, again, sort of green fruits. Um, it's got that lovely, earthy, slightly violety peat. Now, I don't know where they source the peat from. I mean, are there peat bogs in Canada? And again, somebody's bound to tell me. Um, and um, but uh, yeah, again, it's it's so it's got a kind of. If I was going to equate this to a Scottish whisky, it's got more of a mainland peaty kind of character. That earthy, violety, slightly heathery uh, peat. Um, there's some, there's some lovely malt there. I mean, it, it works. It's almost like peated Macmyra, you know. You think sort of like big, estery, fruity uh, whiskey, not going to work with peat at all. But it does, you know, absolutely, absolutely spot on. You know, really, really impressive. Um, so what that's like. Well, it opens up with that sort of the, the, the classic sort of like a Yukon character, the sort of the estuary fruit, the pineapple, the apricot, the, the pear, some dusty spices and, and peat moves in, um, a little bit of heather, a little bit of violets. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting kind of battle going on between the peat and the spirit on the mid palate you're getting sort of you know on the one hand you're getting the sort of slightly bubble gummy kind of, of fruit character and then you've got the peat and it's kind of you know there's a, there's a real fight going on here and eventually the peat wins out on the finish and it's got a lovely length and earthiness of peatiness um but the sort of the, what happens is that the, the the character of the sweet character of the of, or the sweet fruit character of the malt kind of gives the peat that sort of sweetness and um, uh, just stunningly balanced. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, mm, yeah, I want to buy this in the UK, but I can't. <gasps> So let's sum today's episode of the show up. So firstly, a big, big thank you to uh, two brewers for their continued support and kindly sending the samples. And um, a big thank you to my good friend Shane, um, who um, always goes, uh, you know, occasionally goes goes back home and goes, um, look, I brought you this. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's that's cool. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, thank, <laughs> big thank you. Anyway, so uh, the Glenora Silver. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, new make, um, obviously, Filtered, obviously, sort of cut down uh, to make it, um, you know, sellable as as vodka. Um, but yeah, it kind of gives you obviously the insight into the character of uh, uh, of the distillery and what they're doing. Um, the um, Glen Breton Ten, yeah, um, yeah, pleasant enough, like I, like I said. But I think it kind of like um, it needs a higher ABV. I think in this day and age. Um, 
I really don't think there's any excuse for, for really bottling it at, at sub 46% uh, and, you know, filtering. I mean, there's just no need for it. Yes, I know that, that obviously the higher the alcohol content, the more duty it is, the higher, the more expensive the retail price of the bottle is. But sometimes you're just going to have, you just have to go, look, price is not the, not the, the, the be all and end all, you know, it's, it's about what we want to achieve and uh, and I think this is kind of a classic example of you know a good whiskey that could be better um, yeah so school report like pretty much all of my school reports <laughs> seem to have well could do better um, and I think in this instance that I think um, that is very much applicable um, now the the rye, yes, I mean it's bottled at 40 percent. It, it it had some pleasant intensity, and and I think you kind of right have to go. Well, it is what it is. It's a no age statement rye. Um, again, it was probably fairly cheap and cheerful, and you know you can't complain about that one. The the red letter bottling. Now that was to me the real deal. That was really impressive. Lovely complexity, lovely intensity, and. Um, you know, uh, just again, I, see the thing is, I, I fear that sort of like, you know, um, a lot of distilleries kind of really do overlook the alcohol. Um, they spend all this time sort of blending various casts together and all this kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, I want this flavour profile. And then they just kind of forget about the alcohol, you know, or, or should we say it appears they forget about the alcohol and what in that impact that has upon the the, the blend because this is absolutely spot on just right the alcohol content is is absolutely spot on it sort of brings out that the, the spiciness and, and and adds a balance and and it, at the end of the day it's uh, an important component right uh two brewers number 20 the less we say about that the better to be honest with you um i mean <laughs> like i said i know there's a lot of people that are going to absolutely love that stuff I'm afraid I'm not one of them. Um, but number 19, the Peated, it, again, is, is a great whiskey. It is beautiful, it's lovely balance, and it just, like I said, it never fails to amaze me how, you know, these kind of um, spirits uh, that have a sort of like a, a lovely estery, fruity character sometimes, and this is obviously a... Uh, uh, proves the point that they really do work with Pete, you know, and um, that was absolutely stunning. Really, very, very good. So, anyway, um, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, this will, you know, we'll get plenty of comments uh, on the, on this week's episode of the show. So, uh, uh, all that's left to be said is um, good cramming and good afternoon. <laughs>